I love DJ Moore. I bought his jersey this year. I bought his jersey the year before when he was number 12. And I bought it again <laughs> when he was number two. So I love DJ Moore. I think he is a very underrated talent and a very underrated receiver. Baker Mayfield has not been very good. That much is true. DJ Moore has had passes go his way that have not been accurate. He's clearly frustrated. You can see it in his body language and his route running. But, Dave, I talked to you a little bit earlier today about it. it there always seems to be just a, a little bit of an issue with his, with his route running, um, not being super crisp and balls maybe being in the wrong direction or timing being off. What – what do you what do you make of that? What do you think's going on there? Because it hasn't only been with Baker that this has happened. I'm not trying to blame DJ Moore for all this. I'm not, but it seems like this has kind of been a little bit of a trend in a way. Yeah, Tanner, you can go back and look at past you know episodes of this podcast where we've talked about this, and I've never really shied away from the fact that I'm not so sure DJ Moore really is a bona fide number one receiver um he does struggle to create separation in his route running and that's just the way his career i mean that's the way he's always been since he came into the league now obviously when you get the ball in his hands he's outstanding he's gonna make guys miss he's gonna get those yards after the catch but if you put him out there play in and play out and expect him to create separation he's not always gonna do it and you see that in this game and obviously like you said baker mayfield has not um, you know, helped him in this uh, regard in any way because he's been completely inaccurate. He went DJ's war, uh, DJ Moore's way, what, three times in the beginning of the game and with three of the worst passes I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, yeah. So, obviously, there's, you know, it's, it's the same thing when he had Odell Beckham in, in Cleveland. He just struggles to find that number one receiver, evidently. Um, but it's not all on Baker. I mean, it's DJ, too. The whole offense is out of funk, really, as a whole. Um, but DJ is not getting great separation, and he never really has. And I've always kind of blamed our coaching staff for not putting him in great situations because, to me, he's the kind of guy that if you put in the situations like uh, the 49ers do with Debo Samuel, um, give him those quick screens, those tosses, those uh, you know reverses, Set the guy up in space so he can take advantage of his skill set. And his skill set is uh, moving with the ball in space. He's basically a running back who plays wide receiver. When he gets the ball in his hands, he runs like a running back. Uh, but creating separation down the field has never been his strong suit. He does have really good hands. Um, he does have a lot of natural ability to play the wide receiver position. But he's not always going to win against the best corners in the game. And we saw that in this one. Uh, in my opinion, he's probably more of a number two receiver um, used as a, more of a gadget wide receiver. And the Panthers insist on trying to make him be the number one type wide receiver that he's really just not. And again, that's no that's not a knock on him. He's still a really good player. I just feel like they're using him uh, in a role that doesn't really fit his skill set. I agree with a lot what you're saying. Um, I think, you know. DJ has always had the potential to be a number one um, type of type of player. And, you know, his skill set isn't, you know, the traditional number one wide receiver lineup, throw me the ball, I'm going to catch it and score. Um, he's, you know, he has to be used in certain ways. I mean, obviously the best thing that he does is yards after the catch. So the best situation you can get him the ball is when he can catch it and do something with it after it. He's not your, you know, your Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, throw the ball up, I'm going to come down with it and, and catch the ball. It just, his style is a little bit different, and I think that's fine. But, you know, I don't know if it's the route running that he's doing or if it's, I've heard a lot of people bring up the comments of McAdoo's route trees. Just there's a lot of guys jumbled up together and then they seem to run into each other and it doesn't, it doesn't really flow. Um, I know he's frustrated. I'm obviously not giving up on the guy. He just signed to a contract. He's a, he's a stud. I think he's going to figure it out. I hope so. At least I just feel like he, um, you know, it, he's not playing his best ball, and he's certainly not getting the best balls thrown his way either. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think to a point, uh, you know, you just made, when you look at guys like Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, these are guys who are real twitchy in their route running. They fake one way and break the other way and leave the corner behind them. DJ Moore is just not that kind of route runner. He's got good speed. He's got good acceleration. Um, but more than anything, he's just got a, a, a strong running style. When he gets the ball in his hands, he's going to break those arm tackles. Um, he's going to make guys miss. He's going to get in the open field and make plays. But when it comes to just getting open, you need to scheme him open so he can take advantage of his skill set by getting the ball in his hands quickly and letting him do what he does. He's not a guy who's going to consistently get himself open. And that's just, I, I mean, I said it before, that's how it's been since he came into the league. And for whatever reason, it seems like the Panthers just haven't figured out that they need to do more to get the ball in his hands and quit relying on him so much to get himself open because it's just really not the type of receiver he is. Correct. I agree. 